Yo, so I've got this TV all back together, put the backpack on, clean up quite well. A bit warped there though, this top of um, wood doesn't like moisture. The chassis just sits on there, locks up, and you can get to all your adjustments. I don't even have them take, having to take the back off. It's cool how to put these in the back there. So I like about these old national TVs. Anyway, I'll show you what the base looks like. That one there was gone. There's a base that's set on. The TV is set on that and it wheeled around like a little console. But that, that one wasn't made up of such good wood. That was cheap wood. Three of the wheels are intact, but that one had a wheel fell off. I cannot find it anywhere. Yeah, it's had moisture in it. And I also got this with it. I need ballast. Now it was disconnected when the um, house was purchased that this came from. But you can see, that was a house fire waiting to happen. That's mechanical damage, it's a thermostat. So if this seizes up, that will trip out and shut the heater off. This is a board on chip top thermostat in this heater. No um, biometallic strip to up for this uh, circuit in here. This is useful, I keep that and the switch. It's a 15 amp, two 15 amp loads. Can be polyphase, but it's um, configured for single phase. There it goes in now, obviously. That one is a bit seized, a bit hard to turn. You can see uh, the front of it was all burnt. It's a Braemar electric hair. These are actually quite good heaters in their day. Seven kilowatts if you turn both um, sets of fans and heating elements on. The schematic makes things, uh, makes things a lot easier. It used to be made in Adelaide in Australia. It used to make stuff. I did it a well too. Did a very good job. I'll try and replace that. I'll see if I can get this actually going again. I'll rewire it and see what it does. You can see there it's got some high resistance and some burnage. Another thing you want to take note if you have a heater like this in your house, check those uh, uh, um, heating elements. If they get full of dust or fluff from these not being used over long, long, long periods, they are a fire hazard. You always have to keep these things clean. While you happen to use a the, an air compressor to clean on one of these. One other one of these we've got inside, which is very similar to this one, bolted on the wall. I ended up using the um, vacuum cleaner at first, they get the majority of it off, then using the blower attachment. Had a bit of a mess to clean up in a lounge room afterwards, but it's worth it. Better that than burning your bloody house down. And with shaded pole motors. That one turns quite well, this one, the uh, bearings are seized seized up bearings. It looks like you can't turn one another time. The one we've got you can turn the boost on. That's one just like this. It's on flat out all the time or you've got the normal one where you can adjust the thermostat. And the one we've got has a um, timer on it, a 24 hour timer on it as well. Let's see if we can get this thing going again. No biometallic strip so. Um, we have to fix that. Goes in there. It's been smashed off. I'm not sure what caused that. It might be some high resistance. That's probably what caused it to melt up in the first place. The main power wire is overloaded. Yeah, something's gone high resistance in here. It's melted bloody. Melted those connectors over there. Melted those down. Those wires aren't. They appear to be overloaded. You see these ones that got burnt. Yeah, so one of these heating elements has gone high resistance, so I reckon. Because these um, heating elements are clean. So something's gone high resistance. The heating element's gone high resistance, and these fans are uh, uh, seized up. And of course, there's no air blowing past a hot heating element, it's going to glow red hot. And that would have uh, contributed, I reckon. Yeah, not good. House fire waiting to happen. Anyway, I'll just uh, use this as a ballast. Get some good blower fans out of it too. That'll be useful. I found a date so the uh, thermostat's made in France. 16 amp, 240 volt. Date code 5th, 1980. There you go. So packed, brand. 
made in 1980, this heater. That sort of vintage it is. 35 under watts, 240 volts. That's a hot, um, a standard hot water service heating on the McMurph there. Silicon spray helped, so I'm going to keep these fans, keep that, keep everything, and probably just uh, have some fun with these heating elements. Yeah, it'd be a good ballast to watch them pop. They're like a toaster heating element, they've got potential going across, they can, um, it's like a hot potential divider in there. So you put a multimeter probe across anywhere on a heating element, from 0 to 240 volt. Looks like got two sets. The two sets of heating elements that looks like. In one way, two are active and two are neutral. And one goes to the thermostat. Yeah. Good uh, terminal block for my ZVS too. Much to it. I'm going to keep that too. Useful those. Made by a local sheet metal fabricator and some electrical engineering. That's all it took to make this thing. Here we are. There really isn't much to these heaters. One of these is actually made in Australia, I can say. A bit broken, but that's because the cover was off it and the threw rubbish on top of it, so. Yeah. To have one of these old space heaters, I suggest you maintain the living daylights out of them. Things like this, as well as closed dryers, if you don't maintain and clean them, that's what happens. They're a house fire hazard. Got to keep these things clean and re regularly maintained. That one's good. Alright, I'll get this uh, all apart. Just hook up these separately. Yeah, way too dangerous. Okay, post-mortem, autopsy revealed. And look at this heating element, heating element, for example, and how easy that is to turn. As you can see, they're all nice and straight and in good condition. And you can see this one, they're blackened and they've sagged. So that tells me this thing has gotten very hot and overheated. So this was a culprit. That's um, slowing, either slowing down and not pushing enough air past the heating element or seizing up altogether and that would have overheated and somehow this may have either been too slow or failed completely because that's supposed to cut out and stop this heat would rise and shut that off open the circuit and that turns this heating element off but for some reason this one didn't do that so either it got too hot too quickly tripped out and kept resetting and no one was home to actually see that it was actually overheating so that could have been the culprit, so yeah, you've got to maintain these things. So they especially, those, and those little cheap Chinese heaters you buy for 10 bucks. They use the same principle, a little uh, biometallic strip thermostat that chips out if the fan stops working, but they're more of a fire hazard because they're made of plastic and not metal. So yeah, be very careful. Keep these sorts of things well maintained. Yep, you can see there, that was in good condition. This one is overheated. Got real hot, way too hot. You can see there, smoke fired that, and that would have put stress in the wire, eh? and that's it. Yeah, that's that was way too close to cut for that. That would have uh, scared the other, that's for sure. Would have smoked the house out. I'll fix this motor up, and we'll uh, get this on a test first. I'll aim this one up. If it aims up a lot, I'll fix it. We can use these as little blower fans. But quite useful for that. And they're screwed, not riveted together. That's good. Okay, it's all wired up, ready to go. Let's test this fan out. Sucks her in. The way the head is designed, it pulls it in the top and pushes it at the bottom and circulates it. The way the cabinet was designed. Yeah, not much of air. Yeah, need a good uh, shroud and everything around it. Be a good extraction fan for soldering though. Yeah, I could use it. Make a little shroud for that. Be a good extraction fan for soldering. Yeah, you've got to get the bearings a chance to get the silicon spray in there.
<laughs> it's going faster. I was not pulling much, it's only a little low, low, low powered um, motor. Let's try the other one. If I can get those uh, terminals off there, they're pretty uh, stuck on. And uh, bloody broke it. Hit the wire out of the centre with a bobbin. Oh well, that one's gone. So they can spray work there. Oh well. This one, can, this one here can be an overload victim. Strip it apart and just have the heading in them and we can put some uh, power through it till it pops. So plug it in there, neutral, overload it bit by bit and just melt it down. Like a toaster element. Anyway, got some pretty good goodies out of this. Nice spare switch and a thermostat switch. Get some goodies out of it. Neon in that too. It's a neon indicator switch. Anyway, that's enough for now. Thanks so much.